The bed in itself was chained to the wall. Why would anyone find this suspicious? Because I don't find this suspicious at all. You're a Mexican pizza. Ooh. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Hi, welcome back. I wish I would find my chill, but I can't. Welcome back to my pink gloved Taco Bell mukbang. I'm so freaking excited. Today we have an entire spread of Taco Bell. And just so you guys know, this is my first meal of the day. So <laughs> I don't know why I just decided to do this. So we've got six chalupas, two nacho Doritos tacos, cinnamon twist, 10 Cinnabon delights, a cheesy Fiesta potatoes, a breakfast crunch wrap supreme. And then we also have a beef nacho griller burrito and then we also have a blueberry freeze or something like that not the Febreze. I swear. It's not Febreze. No, 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 no. I'm gonna do which Taco Bell character I am okay ready I mean I'm just saying like this is like not casual like it's marketing I'm <laughs> just kidding <laughs> put like, link to the description okay ready what Taco Bell Adam am I why am I southern I'm a crunch wrap supreme okay. crunch wrap supreme do we have that Oh, really? You better uh -huh. eat it up, boo boo. Eat your heart out. Show me how you eat that crunch wrap supreme. That this is the fun. breakfast crunch wrap supreme. So it comes with hash browns, eggs, and sausages. Mm -hmm. oh, that looks so really good. I'm just going to try this. I am. Um... Oh my god. Oops. You can't take a picture, right? Mm mm. Okay. Banger. What do you think? Banging. I'm delicious. Oh boy. There you go. <laughs> what are you? What are you? Are you something good? Are you something cool? No, I don't even know what that was. I don't even know what this is. What is this? You're a Mexican pizza. <laughs> they have that? Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay, what is this? Mm. We don't have Your it? Your cheesy gordita crunch. So everything I've done, we don't have. Mm. I guess you just can't have him, you know? Yep, nope, nothing. You're nothing. Nothing. You're nothing, boo-boo. Damn, that's kind of sad. How do you feel being nothing? I'm just kidding. <laughs> the chalupa's so good. People get so triggered that I put the sauce on the outside, but like, please leave it in the comments. I cannot be the only one that puts it on outside. There's no Diablo. Mm-mm. What is this weak sauce? We have sauces in the fridge too. Mm. Like Frank's hot sauce. But I want Diablo sauce. Do you even like Diablo <laughs> sauce? <laughs> Today we're gonna get right into it. Today we've got Reddit mysteries. Some of my favorite things to do, which are Reddit mysteries. It's strange because I am YouTuber, kind of. Not really, but kind of trying to be. But truly, I spend most of my time on Reddit. <laughs> You okay? Drop that. It's okay. There's a whole salad down there. Just don't let mango over. Well, don't say her name. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I even dropped a sauce packet. Oh, okay, this taco is fragile. Like my heart. Do you guys see that? It just. <clears throat> well. So. Yeah, that's one thing. Why is their taco so fragile, though? Mm -hmm. You know. Breakfast Supreme Crunch Wrap. Is it's it good? so good. It looks very good. You're gonna love it. So Reddit mysteries are very intriguing. It's honestly kind of like having these mini unsolved mysteries mm. because technically most of them don't get solved. A lot of them are up for debate, mainly also because you are talking to the person themselves. So if they admit to committing a crime or kind of hint in it some way, which we'll get into something like that today, but then suddenly they take it back and they say, oh, well, I never did that. How can you really believe that that ever happened? How can no. you really believe it? And so a lot of the times, because you are talking to a lot of the parties that are directly involved, you don't really know if something's been solved. And they've got a lot of fascinating, just dark sh over there so the first thing that we're going to start with is by the name of iceman throwaway okay that was his account name now for a throwaway he actually had a lengthy reddit history which it's not the lengthiest as it can be but for a throwaway account in my opinion from what i've seen it's pretty lengthy he had a five month history of posting on all these different subreddits that a lot had to do with gaming so none of it really had to do with anything you know criminal anything rbi related or no sleep or anything creepy that would suggest that this guy is all up in the reddit creeps like he likes reading about shit like this Mm-hmm. You're gonna try a Cinnabon. 
Mm. I feel like nothing's saucy enough today. This is saucy. Okay. This is a potato griller, actually. I'm gonna go in with this beefy Frito. Mm. This is good. This is really good. This is the best, the breakfast mm -hmm. one. This is my first time having their breakfast thing, I think. Mm. Really good. And he decided to post to a subreddit on July of 2019. Now the subreddit that he decided to post on is called Too Afraid to Ask. Now this subreddit is not one that I frequent too, too often only because it's a lot of controversial questions on there. One of the questions was, why are people offended when you say colored people? But saying people of color is almost like an empowering term that politicians use. Instead right? of colored people? Colored people. They were saying it sounds so similar. Why would you be offended by one similar saying and not the other? And so they True. ask a lot of questions. Sometimes questions about race and stuff and racism. And it's just very controversial. But so far from the entire subreddit, I feel most of the people have good intentions. Like nobody asks these crazy controversial questions just so they could rile people up. They just genuinely want to be informed. And usually people will inform them very, very nicely in the comments and then they'll get a better perspective. This one Redditor posted on that subreddit asking a very very intriguing question but to, before we get into the question I kind of have to set the background for you and it was provided in context of his post I live in this very small town and this small town has a lot of old people and I don't really have a lot of people that I can ask in this town about this but it's a very suburban area and like a lot of suburban areas the economy was not booming at the time and so a lot of these retail shopping centers after a couple months they'd close down after a couple more months they'd close down and they would mm -hmm. just lose business and one kept opening up after another when all of of a sudden a lot of them closed down and within a month 12 of the same identical stores popped up like 15 walmart 12 walmart? like 12 but they were all small name brands and it's very strange because they're not just identical in the sense that you know they're all hair salons or they're all nail salons they were saying it almost seems like they got their signs <laughs> their logos and their names all from the same board shop, the people that do all the store signs. And it's all a variation of each other. Like one could be called, let's say it's Taco Bell Town, it'd be Taco Bell Town Market. Mm -hmm. And then the other one would be Market of Taco Bell Town. And when he walked into a couple of them, he mm -hmm. noticed that all of them kind of had an identical floor plan mm -hmm. and sold the exact same things at the exact same prices as one another. Okay. It wasn't like one was more competitive than the other. And most of the times it looked like there was not strong business in any of the 12 identical stores. One day he decides to go into one of the stores and just purchase some food items. So mind you, what's very interesting about these stores is that he said that when he walks in, the main thing that they sell are great value items. Now if you don't know, great value is the store brand of Walmart. So it's almost mm. like selling um, Kroger brand at a random store, but with a massive markup. So it's not even like you're selling hot Cheetos at a pricier price, you're selling okay. Walmart goods from Walmart for more. So why couldn't it just be a big developer who opened up all these shops? But why would they? Because they want to take over this whole economy in this town. But Walmart's so much cheaper. Is there a Walmart? Mm -hmm. But people go to convenience store for convenience. They don't want to drive all the way to Walmart. They want to go to this little store whenever they want and pick up something. They don't mind paying a little more. Okay, you're going to get stumped at the next thing then. Right? <laughs> okay. So it goes in. And he purchases some food items. Mm -hmm. He checks out, realizes a couple things are weird. Mm -hmm. You have to use cash under $50 for any purchase under $50, which is very strange for a convenience store. That's very high. It's very high. Yeah, how many people carry $49 Yeah, exactly. Cash? Convenience stores, I mean, you're not going to be racking up the bills by adding chocolate candy bars. Yeah, you just buy yeah. a soda. Exactly. And these days, I mean, this was July of 2019. It wasn't like many, many years ago where maybe not everyone accepted credit cards. People just thought it was strange. He thought it was strange. And he said, okay, so I went in and I bought my groceries and then I came home <laughs> and I was going to make a sandwich. I opened up the bread loaf and inside the middle of the bread loaf, the bread was literally turning the shade of green. Like green lettuce green. And so he's like, this is absolutely disgusting. This is the most over priced moldy ass bread that i have ever seen in my entire life so they and got so vegetable he looks, in the bread already yeah <laughs> that's why it's expensive it's like a whole foods on crack he looks at the expiration date of the bread and realizes it's freaking two weeks overdue expired 
-hmm. And so he's like, what the hell is going on? He goes back into the store to return the little bread loaf, and then he starts kind of snooping around, and he looks at the dairy section and realizes all of the milk in the dairy case are months expired, what? which is absolutely disgusting. Who comes into this store? Mm -hmm. And so he just thought that he would avoid it for a little while. He mm -hmm. avoided it, but the strange thing is, like he mentioned recently, a lot of the stores have been in and out of closing. But now these stores, all 12 of them, mm -hmm are staying longer, they have massive square footage, they have a ton of employees. Really? But who the hell is shopping here? Mm -hmm. He just thinks it's so strange, and every time he goes in, all of the employees stare him down. Not even in like a, ooh, I wonder if that's our first customer that's going to buy something, but kind of almost in a threatening way. <laughs> like, don't buy anything? Yeah. That is very creepy. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, a lot of people have a lot of questions. Where do you live? Where is this town located? Does the police know about it? Do the governors know about it? Why don't you talk to your neighbors about it? Why don't you talk to other people about it? Mm -hmm. And he pretty much mentions he lives in a really small town where there's a lot of old people. It's almost like a retirement city. And yeah. so he feels like, really, I don't really have a lot of friends. I haven't really been able to ask. And I'm sure there's something about it that's just inherently creepy. Did he give the location? Mm-mm. Oh. And so people come up with a lot of different theories. The first being money laundering. So did you guys know money laundering comes from the turn of laundry mats? Because that's where it started. So a lot of people who started money laundering by opening up stores as a storefront to push their money through, they would open up laundry mats because that'd be a lot of change, that'd be a lot of cash that could go unaccounted for, or mm -hmm. that you could, you know, say that you got this cash, but how could they really track it down, right? It's a laundry machine. They opened a lot of laundry mats called money laundering, right? Well, not called, but thus called money laundering. Yeah. And so a lot of people are like, I wonder if it's some sort of money laundering where people are opening up these stores and, you know, maybe someone's buying something, maybe they're not, maybe they're just like hustling money in and out of the place. Some mm -hmm. people said maybe it's a human trafficking ring and what? behind the store they are selling other goods that are not food products and it's illegal to go into, I mean, it's just very sketchy. Like let's say if you have the police department watching your every single move, it's incredibly sketchy to go into random people's houses. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times you think that the house is the most private place to do whatever activity that you probably don't want other people knowing about. But if you are going in and out of houses, the first thing police think is it's a drug deal. Mm -hmm. Everything's kind of a drug deal. And so if you were to go into a store, it kind of looks like you're just buying groceries. And if you walk out with like a bag full of expired goods that they think is not expired, technically it just looks like you bought some groceries. And mm -hmm. so some people were saying that. But one that I thought was very intriguing was what's called a food stamps fraud. Mm. Mm -hmm. God damn, people are smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Wow. Damn, it makes sense. It makes so sense, right? So sense, bitch. <laughs> I mean, make, make no, no sense. sense. <laughs> okay. So if there's one store or one group who's doing it, then there must be a ton of people out there is doing something like that. So food stamps fraud, a lot of different countries have different words for food stamps. So in America, it's either food stamps or EBT. It's like a mm -hmm. electronic something, right? So they have EBT cards per different state. They all have different ones. And I believe in other countries, it's just called welfare or it's part of the welfare system. And so essentially in America, a lot of the times there are these big organizations now. A lot of the times people worry about one individual or a couple individuals, you know, scamming the government by getting food stamps when they really don't qualify for them. I mean, they might not be like, like the Bill Gates of the world, but maybe they just don't fall under government's qualifications of mm -hmm. requiring EBT. But these days, there's actually a lot of black market massive organizations where an entire organization will work the system and you're talking about maybe a couple people, maybe 10, 20 people, and they're getting hundreds of EBTs a month. 
And so what they believe, is a lot of people, the Redditors, they believe that these storefronts, because if you keep buying food from the same one place, it might be a little bit alarming. Because a lot of the times when you have EBT, you buy something from Walmart, you buy something from Ralph's, you go to Whole Foods, you know, you go to all these places. And so they set up these 12 different markets and they have these expired overpriced goods. Why? Because overpriced, it's easier to market up. Does that make sense? So let's say if your EBT allows you to have $150 a month mm -hmm. and milk is now $7 at this store versus $3 at the other store mm -hmm. then it's just less items to reach hundred and fifty dollars yeah you buy and less. so yeah yeah you buy much less and they're also saying the expired goods probably don't come from Walmart they probably don't go to Walmart and buy these great value items they probably get them at like food banks or people mm. throwing them away or donation centers so the cost is low so the cost is incredibly low and also there's a lot of places that sell expired foods mm. for dirt cheap and so what they're saying is Holy that <laughs> the organization set up these stores just so they can run a bunch of EBTs through it. And it seems like the town people might not know because it could be 10, 20 people who made an organization and then said, okay, let's go to this random town, set up 12 stores mm -hmm. and then just sit there and swipe EBT cards. But if you're talking about hundreds of EBT cards a, a month, hundreds, I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine and an organization. EBT is what? How much? Like a thousand maybe? EBT? No. No, no. A couple hundred. A couple hundred? Yeah. And so they think that it's a food stamps fraud. Wait, somebody came up with that or somebody said there are things like that exist? Redditors came up with a theory that these 12 stores are a food stamps fraud and that things like that exist. And the food stamps market is getting so much bigger, like the black market for food stamps. Really? Yeah, and there's, well, I don't think, okay, so I did my research and some people were saying, I haven't seen necessarily this exact ideal of people who run an organization and get fake food stamps and then also open up like a grocery store. But I have seen a lot of grocery stores pop up, like um, <coughs> allegedly through Reddit and stuff, like grocery stores that'll pop up. And if you swipe EBT, they'll give you like a, you know how you can sell gift cards for a cheaper price? Yeah. So they'll like swipe your EBT and max it out and then give you a little bit of cash. There are stores like yeah. that? Yeah. It's that's like highly illegal. freaking crazy. Yeah, but that's what I read. I have no idea. I have no like, actual personal experience with illegal activities. The 12 <laughs> stores, honestly, it doesn't make sense number okay. wise. Yeah. It doesn't add up until mm -hmm. unless they have such a... Because think about it, to run 12 stores and to pay employees, yeah. unless the employees are the owners. Yeah. But still, even if one store is one person, mm -hmm. electricity, gas, you have to use a lot of cash flow. You like how I'm trying to make the number work? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, do you work for them? <laughs> You're like, this is bad business. This is a great investment. <laughs> As a business consultant, let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this. What makes the story even more interesting is that Iceman Throwaway, he actually mentioned in one of the comments that he was going to go in and take a picture of the store and take a picture of some of the items to show them it's literally just all great value items and they're all expired i mean you know this is just strange that was the last comment that he made and he hasn't posted since then so there's two theories anytime a throwaway redditor you know posts something a little bit creepy and then kind of disappears from the face of the internet which mm -hmm. is a something bad really did happen or b this person was trolling or either was like, oh, this is getting scary and then ditched their account. Some people conclude that because he said that he was gonna go in and take pictures and he had mentioned that these people are very threatening, very creepy. And if this is a large organization who went through the trouble of opening up 12 stores and doing all of this, it seems like they're not the type that will just easily get caught mm. and just let some random dude come in and ruin their entire business. Mm -hmm. And so people are scared of that reason or reason B is people think that Maybe this was, it is called a throwaway account. He literally called it Iceman Throwaway. Now, the reason that some people are skeptical to believe that one is because typically with throwaways, they'll just post that one. Does that make sense? So they'll make a throwaway account and then be like, oh my gosh, this store has, you know, their the store has great value products overpriced. But then because he had five months of posting history, it just seemed like, was it just an anonymous account? Like, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. And so that's leaving a lot of questions in people's minds. Please leave it in the comments. What are your thoughts on it? The next story is another Reddit mystery, but this one has some concrete proof that the theory in itself, this thing that people are talking about actually exists. Whereas the 12 identical stores, we don't really have concrete proof of it. We have someone's word for it, but there's no evidence, there's no pictures, there's no location where people can actually scout it and see if these even exist 
existed in real life and not just in the figment of someone's imagination. This one is a hotel based in Houston, Texas, and it's called Hotel Zaza. Now, Hotel Zaza is a four-star hotel, okay, bitch? Zaza, bitch. This place is a themed hotel, which means that every floor has a different theme and every room has a different theme. And so it's kind of like a very unique, fun type of hotel. And a lot of companies will actually rent out these hotel rooms for like conferences or they'll do it for like business trips. And so the Redditor that posted this, the OP, they said that, hey, you know, we went to a conference with a bunch of my colleagues and the hotel, or the company obviously booked us a bunch of rooms in the hotel. Mm -hmm. We all got our own rooms. We usually stay at Hotel Zaza and we all love it. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's not a new hotel for us. And mm -hmm. he said, what's interesting though, has has anyone stayed in room 322? Mm -hmm. So everyone's like, room, room 322. And he posted this on the Houston subreddit. Mm -hmm. So it was very geographically like centered. So it's not, you know, just for all of Reddit or like RBI. And he's like, you know, room 322, it's just so strange because my colleague, they said that they didn't have any rooms left and they were all booked out. And so we were like, oh God, but we, we booked the rooms in advance. What do you mm -hmm. mean? And they were like, okay, we do have this room. And so then gave him the key. And, you know, obviously we put my stuff down in my room first and then we walk to his room mm -hmm. and we open the door and it is not a Hotel Zaza room. So normal Hotel Zaza rooms that we've been in, you know, they have this beautiful bed, beautiful windows, bright lights, sunlight, mm -hmm. natural light bathroom mm -hmm. you know the carpeted floors i just don't understand yeah. and so then they go into room 322 and they see that the floor is all concrete but that's not even the creepier part it was about mm -hmm. a third of a regular size room it was okay. the same price and the bed in itself was chained to the wall and hotel zaza what? is not a creepy themed hotel it's not like one of those haunted hotels or like one of those amusement park hotels even though it's a themed hotel this one had pictures of skulls everywhere like, maybe it is a theme and just like pictures of there was this one i mean who picture. the hell puts pictures of skulls everywhere <laughs> except if, if um, yeah and there was a picture of james comey who is part of the Stanford Financial Group, and they re they were shut down not too long ago for being a big, massive Ponzi scheme. And so there's literally just a portrait of him hanging, <laughs> facing the bed. And there's a lot of like mixed match paintings. The bed and the furniture is like all weird. It blocks the window. It's very hard to maneuver through the room. It looks like it's it's scary because it doesn't seem like it's safe. It's not so creepy that it feels like scary, but it would be really creepy to find that in a hotel. It's yeah. not like. Ooh, but it's like that's weird like what is that yeah what is this even for like does anyone stay here why do they have this room so they were like we just don't understand we went back to the front desk and we said hey are you sure we're supposed to be in room 322 because it's a weird looking room it's just strange and the front desk person immediately goes oh my god i i'm so sorry and then grabs the key and then goes okay we, we have this room for you and shuffled them up and it was just a regular Hotel Zaza room like the ones that they're normally used to so they went into a wrong room yeah mm. no that's creepy Mm hmm can I find the pictures online mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. it's so creepy you know those hotels have um, you know market has um, like a little police interrogation room mm -hmm. is that what it's for <laughs> I don't no? think so that's what the room looks like. Now the Redditor posted it and asked, is this some sort of like, is this creepy? Is this hotel weird? What are they doing? What are they doing with that room? And a lot of Redditors chimed in. The first being like a hotel architect. And they said something that was very intriguing. And they said that, listen, when you're building a hotel, every square inch of that space needs to be utilized. Let's say you have a big box mm -hmm. and now you're gonna build these rooms. You have to do it so well because every room is an opportunity to make money. Yeah. Why would they make this tiny, tiny little room but charge the same it just doesn't make sense it would have been better if they built out you know the sides of the other rooms next to it or if they made it into some sort of utility closet mm -hmm. why did they build this room it just seems very very weird and so it got so weird to the point where a lot of people were reaching out to the hotel and Hotel Zaza is a chain I believe there's a couple of different locations in Texas it seemed like they weren't the type that could just ignore it it's not like a mom and pop little bread and breakfast bread and breakfast bed and breakfast where they could just you know stay under the radar and be like oh I don't want to talk about it mm -hmm. it just seemed like they were too big at that point to not address it and so the head of marketing right comes out and says listen 
this room exists. You know, obviously you guys have seen pictures of it on the internet. It's one of our themed rooms. Mm -hmm. And so people say, interesting. And they go, yeah, we just, we do a lot of themes. This is one of the themes. It's, um, it's supposed to be like a jail experience. We call it hard times. It's a hard times room. If you want that jail experience, some people love it. <laughs> some people hate it. That's why it's so small and it's concrete and just very secluded. Some people love the seclusion of it. I'm kind of digging it though. What the f I don't know. It looks <laughs> really freaking cool. I mean, I haven't seen the other rooms, but this one looks cool. A lot of people were also saying, but what about the thing about utilizing space? A lot of people mm -hmm. were saying, architects are saying that's a really stupid waste of space because realistically, how many people are going to pay that price to stay in this little jail hole when you go to hotels because you want somewhat of a nice experience, especially a four star hotel. At one point, the owner of the hotel, you know, built this tiny space and they stayed there for two months ish because they didn't want to take up a full room, you know, because that's money when the, the hotel was like first new and popping and so mm -hmm. that's kind of why and then we just converted it into this jailhouse room etc etc it seemed like it sufficed for some people the majority of people that saw that was like okay that's really weird but whatever people are weird these days mm -hmm. but a lot of redditors were not content because what's interesting is if you say it's one of the themed rooms mm -hmm. why is it not listed anywhere on your website oh this room is not no and a lot of redditors went the extra mile of calling <coughs> hotel zaza and asking them hey i'm new to hotel zaza what are the themed rooms blah 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 and they asked about the hard times or some of them didn't and the hard times was never mentioned and so why would they do such a thing so redditors have two different explanations the first half of redditors believe you know it's probably something really freaking creepy it's probably something that you have to rent out it's probably some part of like a secret society at one point a lot of people were connecting it to yale's secret society the ivy league because there there's a secret society from yale that has been i believe confirmed and the logo of that place it's from like so long ago like i want to say like early 1900s is skull and bones and there's a lot of skulls in the room and they have a logo that says like 322 and this is room 322 but they couldn't find any other association they couldn't even find like too many people i don't think they found anyone that were investors even in the hotel or anything like that Related same with james Yale. comey yeah okay. james comey the financial ponzi scheme dude he didn't look like he had any money in the hotel wasn't affiliated with the hotel at any point but his face is in the room but it just seems hmm. very strange. And so some people say it's probably some sort of secret society to go to a nice hotel. Yeah. So what a lot of people were suspecting is let's say you have a very fancy businessman and he wants to spend the night with someone who is not his wife. It would be very suspicious to see a man pull up in his, I don't know, beamer into a motel, which isn't suspicious, but with another woman, some people might raise alarms. The wife might be like, what are you doing at a Motel 6 if she knows how much money they make and the lifestyle that they live? And this man never stays at a Motel 6, but suddenly there's a credit card charge for Motel 6. That would be very alarming for the wife. Okay. And so a lot of people believe that these very fancy hotels, they have backroom, like, hotel rooms for very kinky people because the room in itself was very kinky i mean the bed was chained to the wall and it just you know there's mm. really no like outdoor lighting where people can see in damn that's a lot of secrets yeah and so some <laughs> people think that you can get charged for a hotel room from yeah. hotel zaza and wives and companies might not think it's weird because it's hotel zaza it's a very big destination for business people and it's a four-star hotel but that's normal but also maybe if you have a little weird secret lifestyle you get that room. I'm confused. Why do I like it? <laughs> and then the second group of Redditors, they believe something which I believe to be a little bit darker, a little bit more sinister actually, is that it's all a part of a plan by Hotel Zaza. Because people love haunted hotels. But haunted hotels are very hard to replicate because people only like haunted hotels when it's an older hotel. When there are reported sightings, you've got to have a lot of people that report this sighting. You've got to have a lot of intrigue on it. A lot of people have to say, I saw this, I felt this, I saw this when I stayed at this hotel. Mm -hmm. But how do you manufacture that many ghost feelings? But also, some people like myself, I stay away from haunted hotels. I love reading about it, love talking about it, would never bring them business, not because I hate them, but because I just would never stay at a haunted hotel. I would just be too scared. I want to be able to sleep at night, okay? Not pee my try pants. It. A lot of people believe mm -hmm. that they want to target that mystiqueness 
of a haunted hotel, but do it in a way that's more marketable and there's solid proof. And so they believe that Hotel Zaza's plan is to randomly pick people, typically younger people that look like they use social media, and give them the wrong room number with the wrong key card to Hotel 322. And obviously, they will complain and they'll say, what the hell is this? This is not the room that was marketed. And they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This was your room. And so it's supposed to be this big marketing scheme. Why? Uh. Because when someone asks if there's something sinister going on in your hotel, why would the head of marketing address it? Typically, it's the head of the hotel chain. <laughs> Typically, it's just an employee. But why is it the Damn. head of marketing? That's just very random. Imagine someone's like, hey, are you doing illegal things in your hotel? Head of marketing comes out and says, you know, it's a themed room. Like, it just Come see it yourself. Come see Swipe it yourself. Up. Right? And so a lot wow. of Redditors believe it's been a whole marketing scheme by Hotel Zaza. Okay, I can see that. You see that one more? I think. What? I guess. But like, okay, yeah. But like what? Mm. Yeah, I kind of can. So can I book that room or no? Or they still denies it. Mm-hmm. What's the point? They should just sell the room. I think it takes the mystique away. Then it kind of turns corny, you know? Yeah, but because it's like there, you know it exists, you know it's been confirmed. Because there's a lot of photos online. I know, but they won't sell it to you. So then you kind of get like this crazy like, but I want to see it, you know? So what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. Do you think it's marketing or do you think something weird is going on there? Do you think a lot of business people use it for other reasons that may not just be a nice night in a fancy hotel? Because the room itself is not very fancy at all. Now the third story is one that's very short but very, very creepy. Let's say you log on to Reddit and you see this subreddit called Legal Advice. It's one of the biggest subreddits. A lot of people go on there for different varieties of legal advice, whether it be landlord-tenant issues, you know, mm -hmm. spousal divorce questions, employment employee-employer issues. All of these different legal advice that you probably don't want to like pay for an attorney for, but you want the advice. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people will respond to you. A lot of lawyers are on that subreddit, you know, helping people out as well, or people with law experience. One man posts on this and says, okay, this post was on a Tuesday, and they wrote, Saturday night, my wife stayed out late shopping, and mm -hmm. she never returned home. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. You know, I th I'm thinking about calling the police. Obviously, I want to. Um, I just have a quick question for all of you guys though. Obviously, I wanna tell the police everything and I wanna be as helpful as possible, but mm -hmm. how do I do it without raising suspicion on me? Um, he said, you know, this is, I feel like it'll trigger a lot of suspicion on me. Maybe like start off by not <laughs> asking this? that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, you know, because typically in cases like this, it's always the husband that's the first suspect and I didn't do anything. And then he went on to say, you know, she went out shopping and I haven't really seen her since, talk to her. I feel like now it's the time that I have to call the police because all of her friends and family are calling me asking if I've heard from her. I know I probably should have answered the calls, but I just wanted to file a police report first. Is there any, like, do you guys have any advice? Like, should I only answer their specific questions or do I give them all the information? He even asked, is uh -huh. there anything I shouldn't bring up for a situation like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everyone immediately blew up in the comments mm. like this spread like wildfire even moderators so every subreddit has moderators and they typically stay out of the conversation they're just there to make sure that everybody follows the guidelines there's no like doxing there's no targeting there's no you know if someone's anonymous no trying to expose them and stuff like that and so even a mod chimed in and was like listen this is probably one of the most up things I've seen on Reddit because imagine this you said your wife meant missing Saturday night and now you're saying you're gonna call the police tomorrow you're posting this on a Tuesday which means you'll be calling the police on Wednesday typically even if you were to call typically people will call <coughs> if their wife goes missing within a couple hours and police will tell you give us 48 hours but you went way beyond 48 hours and you're still not saying I'm gonna call them tonight mm -hmm. and also if your wife goes missing there has been zero concern for her safety her health what happened to her and just about suspicion on you not even what am i gonna do that now my wife is gone like how am i gonna live mm -hmm. my life without her like how am i gonna feed the kids how am i gonna do this that is kind of selfish but it's still understandable but it's how do i avoid suspicion that's incredibly creepy that's not this sounds too obvious too people were blowing up in the comment section and this ends on a very scary unsatisfying unsolved note 
which he then says to calm everyone down because at this point people are getting riled up people are like call the family call the police right now we're gonna call the police on you we're gonna find you we're gonna call the police on you because people are like you did something to your wife and we know it this is not normal unless she has a habit of picking up and disappearing all the time that's fine i guess but yeah. he would have mentioned that yeah he would have mentioned this is like the 10th time she's done this yeah. and so he randomly comes out with a comment trying to calm everyone down and this is his last comment which is saying listen i did not kill my wife i know she's alive i forgot she left me a note and the note said that she's going on vacation with her friend and so i called her best friend and her best friend's going to be calling her family members letting everybody know that she's okay and for everyone to calm down so Guys, nothing to worry about here. That's the most suspicious thing. And this was written, I want to say in 2018. So it's not like back in the day where they didn't have, I don't know, cell phones. <laughs> like if yeah. he's posting this on Reddit, he has a computer or a phone, which means his wife probably has a phone, which means she would probably just text him. And who goes on a random vacation? And he had mentioned that she was out late shopping. That's yeah. different from, hey babe, I'm leaving for my vacation, like the girl's trip. You know, remember I told you about that? Like every day. And typically when someone has a vacation, coming up that's all they talk about like yeah. if I was going on vacation by myself without him or like with friends or with my family like that's all I would be talking about I'd be packing he would know he would goddamn know and so everyone's just freaking confused but because he didn't leave enough information to know what city town or anything no one can really follow up but what's interesting is that he didn't get anything out of this typically troll comments they yeah. aren't of this nature they're typically from what i've seen so far aren't on subreddits like legal advice mm -hmm. they're usually on different subreddits and they usually are not this weird and they don't try to calm you down after because mm. trolls like to see the riot so if this was a troll allegedly they would want to see this build and build and build and build and more people think that this person murdered their wife but what he said at the end also is technically creating more riot because it's so yeah. suspicious so people don't know i mean he deleted his post too so that's weird too or i think he deleted his post i'm pretty sure but it's just very strange let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on that one which one of the three reddit mysteries is the creepiest to you i feel like the last one I think the first one is the most confusing yeah. because I can wrap my if it's real I can't wrap my hair around. Yeah, if it is real, there's I can't think of a really good explanation, yeah. even illegal or not illegal. My brain is kind of like I don't understand. Let me know in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.